Aloha from the GTN show brought to you by Zwift. Now, it may not look very tropical right here and now, but we are very soon going to be touching down in Hawaii ahead of the Ironman World Championships. Yeah, Mark, I cannot wait because it is literally the biggest event of the year. So we have got our bags packed. We are literally about to leave. But don't you worry because we are taking you guys with us. In fact, we thought we'd bring you this week's GTN show en route out to Kona. Yep, yeah, now hopefully we make our flight, although that would make for an interesting show for you guys. Well, on that note, in amongst all this exciting news and product releases, we thought we'd also bring you some of our own tried and tested travel tips along the way. Ten hours in, Mark. We're here, San Fran. Yeah, we've just touched down in San Francisco. Uh, we've got a bit of a layover now until we fly on to Hawaii, which is another. How long is that flight, Fraser? Oh, too long, Mark. Yeah, uh, five and a half hours to go, but we'll be there. Yeah. So we thought we'd take this time to run you through some of those travel tips. And first one for you. Well, I'm going to start off. I've got some hand sanitizer here. It never stays far away from me in the front pouch of my rucksack. In fact, Fraser's always just applying it to me <laughs> yeah. as and when I go around my daily activities, even back in the UK. Yeah. Um, but add to that, we've also mm. got First Defense. That's just a nice uh, nasal spray. This was actually recommended to me years ago by British Triathlon and the English Institute of Sport. And I, I genuinely do swear mm. by it. It really helps when you maybe are starting to feel the first effects of a cold. Not when you've got a full-blown cold, but it can help to fend that off in the early stages. Yeah, and just so. take it before you get on the plane on any type of long hack travel actually. Definitely. Um, oh, well, final, sorry, I forgot, but another thing that neither Mark and I did on this trip, but you do see more and more athletes use them, is face masks. Yeah, actually, yeah, we have seen a few mm. pros actually posting photos heading out to the World Champs yeah. here with face masks on. Quite extreme, but it hey, did, if you're yeah. putting in all that training, it makes sense actually to try and If take... you maybe just get a little bit of a funny look in the plane, what does, what does it matter? Exactly. Next thing we want to think about is comfort. Now, Fraser, you quite like to don a I just, pet. I'm just trying to find them here, but these are some trusty compression socks. Now these are actually a spare pair, of they were supposed to be for Mark, but he forgot to put them on. But yep, I've got mine on, always wear them for any type of length of flight, whether it's a long flight or a short flight, I just think they feel comfy. Like the idea of having um, that little bit of snugness and warding off any potential DVTs. And also just Ankles as well. <laughs> yeah, my ankles. Can be a little unsightly when you lay. My land. ankles do swell. My bit of comfort though. Nice pillow. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> you don't have to get quite such a vibrant design as I did, but I thought, heck, my first pillow um, for flying with, and I'm off to Hawaii, I might as well get into the GTN team, didn't put Mark in business class. <laughs> <laughs> um, another very important thing for myself is snacks and water. So, um, this is just one of, this is actually the healthiest snack I had in my bag. <laughs> yeah. I've also got chocolate in there. But do try and go for the healthy snacks. Things like nuts, um, cereal bars like this, and also make sure you've got plenty of water. So that also helps with not only keeping yourself fueled up, but also helping to keep germs and um, stuff away. So Yeah, just steady grazing through it. Because you, especially on a trip like this, and this is an extreme trip, I'm going halfway across the world, but you're traveling all day, in fact, all day and in, into the next day, actually. But We'll not worry about that for now. Um, yeah, just keeping the food intake going. And our next tip um, is actually, if you can, if you've got room to, pack a bit of extra kit. So this could be your general clothes. If you're doing a long haul flight, it's nice to have some extra clothing just to get changed into well, if you need to, but also- in, in case your luggage gets lost and unfortunately you get to the other end and all you've got is the clothes that you're standing in. No, countless people, I'm sure you're the same, friends who have got stuck at the other end of a destination and literally nothing but the clothes on their back. I'm trying to pull those extra clothes out, but they're right at the bottom of my bag, <laughs> um, tucked away. Um, but yeah, and I also would go as far as when I was traveling to races, obviously I'm not racing on this particular trip, but I would actually go as far as packing a couple of things like my bike shoes and my run shoes, um, just because those are sort of things that, well, they're hard to replace when you actually get to the destination. You might be able to get a replacement bike, but trying to get some new shoes, the right size for you, are often quite hard. They are, and on that, on that note, Mark, I have actually in there got packed my swimming trunks, my goggles, and I can't 
because I know that tomorrow morning we're planning on going for a nice swim and I didn't want to be left out. So any training you might want to do the next day, just pack a little bit, an extra pair of running clothes and a pair of trainers in your bag. That means that first day there, if your bags are delayed, you can at least get some training done and feel like you've got your trip started. Yeah, now that is an awful lot of stuff. So probably our final point, unless you're gonna add anything here, Fraser, is also just try to keep it as light as possible mm. at the same time. So yes, you want to make sure that you're well equipped, but you don't want so much bogging down on, onto your back. Um, you know, if you are, are wearing a backpack, they're not the best for your back if you are heading out for a race, and that's not going to set you up too well for the swim. Um, no, I mean, I know you, you're absolutely right, Mark. When I used to be racing, and we're not racing now, we're at Peens to point that out, but I used to try and use a, a trolley bag instead of a rucksack like we're doing now, because I definitely want to keep all that weight off of my back and just wheel it along like you can see some people behind us doing right now. Well, after our rather long travel out, we are here, we're in Kona for the IMA World Champs. We are aloha to all of you from the big island because this is going to be our spot for the next few weeks. Well, two weeks, not yeah. few. I wish it was a few. Yeah, no. But yeah, rather delightful spot we got here, so yeah. Loads of videos coming from here over the next couple of weeks, but we actually got a very nice swim in this morning with Sarah True, a couple of K, and we, we end up having breakfast for a good chat. We were chatting about the Ironman World Champs. I mean, it's a, it's a big event on a lot of people's calendar. And I guess we started to wonder, is it everyone's bucket list race? How many people out there really do want to go to the Ironman World Championship? So, we thought we'd ask you guys. Simple yes or no, whether coming here to the Big Island is something you'd ever aspire to want to Qualify for, come here to watch, any um, involvement in the Ironman World Championship. So find the link on screen. Yeah, so yeah, it's just yeah. up there. Um, and also let us know in the comments section below. Um, but now we have a rather exciting giveaway for you because we have a very cool suit from Canyon Rise On. It's the Myth suit. It's a collab between the two brands. Canyon being a partner of the channel. It's a rather stealthy looking suit, isn't it? I mean, I'm gonna assume here, Mark, um, that this is something that Jan Fredino wears, but I mean, they're two of his sponsors. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that this is a suit that he will possibly be wearing here. It's at least very, very yeah. similar to the suit Looks that great. he's wearing. So yeah, um, we are giving away one suit. It's in your choice of size, obviously. So whoever the winner is, you name the size. Um, yeah, so you can enter that by going to the, the link in the description below this video. So now we're going to move on to try news this week. And first up, since we're here in Kona, we're going to talk about Zwift Academy and give a little bit of an update because this Zwift Academy was started last year in 2018, really with the sole goal of athletes being on that team, trying to get themselves here to the Big Isle. Now, you guys at GTM were able to be part of their selection process last year and see the guys getting their kit out in California. And this year, well, we're here again. Yeah, and they have stepped it up a yeah. notch this year because last year we saw four athletes mm -hmm. getting kitted out very, very exciting for all of them. Seeing the level of support that they got from Specialized and Zwift within that academy. Well, this year there are eight athletes part of that academy. And guess what? They are all here in Kona, in Hawaii for the Ironman World Championship. They've all done it, they've all qualified. Yeah, so. I mean, that is pretty incredible, Mark. The fact that all eight of them have, have to, I mean, obviously they're exceptional athletes, so that's how they managed to get through selection and be a part of that Zwift Academy. But still, to get that selection race done and be here uh, ready to race in Kona is no mean feat. And for all eight of them to have done it is uh, super. It's uh, really exciting to go forward and watch. And, you know, we're hoping that they all have great races. Yeah, so just quickly run through the names of the people on that team. So we've got Levi Howard, Hil Philip Herbert, Justin Lippert, um, Paul Lunt, Ruth Perbuck, Yvonne Timewell, Natia Van Herden, and Maggie Walsh. Now, as I've said, they've all qualified, but it hasn't been without its dramas because Philip Herber, well, he has actually just come back from a broken collarbone to go on to qualify at Ironman Copenhagen mm. and not just qualify, the guy absolutely smashed it. An incredible time of eight hours and 19 minutes to win overall. Yeah, that's very, very fast racing. And it's the fact that he did that just a few weeks after having recovered from a broken bone as well. Quite mind-boggling if you ask me. Yeah, um, and then also we had Ruth Perfect also broken collarbone. Mm. I believe that was out on a training ride. Um, and she has come back, she's out here in Hawaii, but also she raced the 70.3 World Championships just five and a half weeks after breaking the collarbone. I know from experience, having broken my own collarbone, that is good going. Um, she came 11th there, and I'm sure she would have liked to have done better, but also she is in Kona prep, so it's not exactly 70.3 specific training and she's coming back from collarbone. So that is very impressive. I'm sure she'll be looking to get on the podium, if not win her age group. And talking of which, all these athletes are pretty much 
top of their age group contending for the win two of which actually in the same age group it's philip and uh, uh levi isn't Le it yeah. levi yeah. yeah both in the same age groups so they're going to be well, we may see them duking it out yeah. for the win in their age groups. Um, and yet all the others have either been on the podium in the past. Or, um, and these are proper amateur athletes with working full-time jobs or mostly full-time jobs mm. and fitting their training around. So incredible for all of them. We're going to be keeping track of them. We're going to actually be going and seeing some of them in next week's show. So yeah, stay tuned. We've got loads to come from them. Now here in Kona, we very often get new tech or product releases from brands. And we have actually got word or dare I say it, a rumor that there has been some sort of collaboration between Physique and Ventum. Yeah, now we have reached out to Physique to ask them basically whether there is anything special happening <laughs> for Kona. And they came back with this rather diplomatic answer. It says, well, we can't address the question directly. We can say that Physique is always looking for opportunities with their partners. Now, Fraser, to me, that does not sound like a no. I, I would take that as a little bit of a yes, wouldn't you, Mark? Yeah, um, but obviously they didn't want to say that. Well, on that note, we have actually got or acquired some rather sneaky, blurry, might you even say, photos of some sort of collab that would suggest there's maybe some shoes, saddle, and possibly even a bike frame in there too. Yeah, now from what I understand, it is not a new bike no. from Ventum, just to clarify that. It's still going to be their flagship Ventum one flagship triathlon bike that oh. Benton won. Um, but yeah, we'll have to just wait and see because we are out here for a couple of weeks. The expo opens up next week, so we're hoping to get on down there and get our hands on these. And this being the World Championships, this will be the Ventum sponsored bike course. So moving on to some more unfortunate news, unfortunately, because we have heard that three-time Ironman Hawaii champion Marinda Carfrey has, well, unfortunately, had an accident whilst out running for um, Ironman 70.3 Santa Cruz, actually. She was just doing a 20-minute easy jog, apparently, and literally tripped on nothing in her own words. So hit the deck pretty hard and was more embarrassed than anything she said at the time. We can imagine we've all been there, haven't we? But unfortunately, she actually hit the deck so hard that revealed a broken radial bone in her arm, wasn't it? Yeah, now, for, you know, not that far out from the Ironman World Championships, that could risk putting her out of the yeah. race. She has been one arm swimming. She yeah. is not giving up. Like she's, a trooper. She really has. Um, and apparently is confident she's going to be on the start line here. She's in good shape, although I'd imagine the swimming might have taken a little bit of a hit, which is a worry for someone who wasn't a strong swimmer anyway. But she is going to be here. She is going to be racing. But obviously, that's not an ideal lead into it. But for someone who's had an even less ideal prep or lead into this race is Sky Munch, who actually crashed whilst out training. Oh, what a horrendous looking fall she oh. had, but she was in, um, well, all sorts of states of plaster and various broken bones in the picture we saw, wasn't yeah, she? Yeah, but that is a pretty resounding yeah. out DNS for Iron Man World Championship. It's really sad because she is yeah, a we, very exciting athlete. Uh, we saw her come through for, you know, um, the, the unfortunate circumstances of Sarah True, but we were there in Frankfurt when Sky got her um, European Iron Man Championship win. Absolutely. Um, now, last bit of unfortunate and well, yeah. sad news, and we're just going to rattle through this one because I really don't want to give it too much time of day. Um, this is some doping that's been reported within the age group ramps for the Iron Man World Championships last year. Yeah. And they've just announced this in the last couple of weeks. I guess as we've got the build-up towards this year's World Championships, so I would assume to act as a well, some sort of deterrent to any athletes who perhaps are stupid enough to think that they can come here having doped and get away with it. So we had four athletes last year who all tested positive in uh, random pre-testing before they went. Yeah, and um, I mean, not only is it just stupid doping and not not great, but also the fact that they've turned up glowing. I guess that's the term you call it in Kona Week. Um, just makes them look even stupider. Really. Yeah, and hopefully it means that a lot of other athletes out there are having a little bit more confidence that Ironman are doing what they can. Our well, final bit of news actually comes from something a couple of weeks ago, but we forgot to talk about during the show. It wasn't something we missed though, but it was Alex Zanardi, who is the rather famous racing car driver, who is unfortunately um, disabled now. He lost his legs in a really unfortunate accident. He has gone on to do some incredible things within the para triathlon, para cycling world as well. Yeah. Um, he has previously set the Ironman world record for para triathletes, and he's now gone on to break his own record in Ironman Italy in an incredible time, eight hours and 25 minutes. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a mind boggling time. It's an incredibly inspirational performance. I mean, the fact that he was able to do it in his home Ironman in Italy, and he said that the crowds were apparently just absolutely amazing out there on that run course. And, and he placed eight <laughs> overall. Yeah, I mean, think about that. That is just really incredible. And he's no spring chicken either, is he? Yeah, and from what I understand, he almost stole the limelight from the pro men, the likes of Cameron Worth, who yeah. 
absolutely outstanding performance himself. Um, obviously in his home crowd, yeah. coming across the line, doing such an incredible, incredible time. Um, yeah, really stole the crowd there. So now we're moving on to race news, and geez, there was quite a lot of racing this past weekend, Mark, whilst we were getting ready for flying out here, doing all our packing, but we were still keeping abreast of all the results. And first up, the full distance race was Ironman Chattanooga, and we had an uh, Ironman debut win for Sam Long, an American. Second place, Matt Russell, which is really impressive because he's racing here in, well, 13 days after finishing that Ironman. And I understand, actually, he suffered a five minute penalty for littering. Really? Yeah, wow. just outside the drop zone, um, something. Ooh. His first penalty. Um, That's harsh. So still came back to take a second from that. But on that note, I do remember Matt um, doing exactly the same thing last year. Tried and tested uh, routine for him. In fact, doing one Ironman, he feels he races even better on uh, an Ironman a couple of weeks later. So fingers crossed he has another fantastic race here in two weeks' time. So that was second place for Matt. And third place went to Nicholas Chase. Yeah, over on the women's side, it was Angela Neath that took the win. Uh, we had Lisa Robertson second, and then Lenny Ramsey taking a third. Yeah, and then we are down to Ironman 70.3 distances and the first event that we'll talk about is the Augusta 70.3 which was used as a tune-up for some athletes for this weekend too most notably the Canadian Lionel Sanders who is on his comeback after an unfortunate stress fracture earlier this year so he's had another very successful race outing he took the win really good tussle with South African Bradley Weiss um, um, Xterra world champion so it sounds like a great race I there. did actually tune in a little bit to a keep track of this race because it was exciting. We had Niels Fromhold off the front out of the swim, then we had uh, Bradley Weiss um, caught by Lionel Sanders, and then the two sort of rode together and came off the bike together. Pulled away. Pulled yeah. away, um, and yeah, they just tussled. It looked like Brad Weiss was gonna win it, and then Lionel just came through with a surge and broke him, basically. Yeah, it's interesting, it bodes well. We'll see how he goes when he gets out here to the Big Island soon. And then, not forgetting, third place athlete, well, that was Brazilian Andre Lopez. Yeah, and over on the women's side, it was Chelsea Sidaro taking the win, uh, Sarah Pianpiano taking second and third, went to Lauren Barnett. Next 70.3 to talk about is a very hot one indeed, much like out here in Kona. So we had Ironman 70.3 Cozumel in Mexico. And another fascinating race here. We had the much talked about Rudy Von Berg who lit things up with the fastest bike split at the World 70.3 Championships in Nice just a couple of weeks ago. So he led off the bike with a sizable, sizable margin, should I say, on the rest of the field. And he looked set to take that win until a certain Tyler Butterfield started running. Now he got onto the run course and by his um, own account, he was just going to be happy to get himself into the podium position. He did that quite soon into the run, but then he realized actually maybe Rudy was within sight. And sure enough, he overhauled a seven minute deficit, which is an enormous time to catch up in a half hour match. So he took a very, very impressive win with a blistering run split in the heat down there in Cozumel. Rudy held on for second and Austrian, Bra uh, not Brad Weiss, sorry, Michael Weiss came third. Uh, over on the women's side, it's Ellie Salthouse who took the win a couple of minutes ahead of Svenja Toes. And it seems like those two were really duking it out. They were a sizable lead ahead of third place finisher Sara van der Vel. Now moving on to another Ironman 70.3, but this time coming over onto the continent of Europe. And we had another very experienced athlete taking the win there, none other than Javier Gomez from Spain. So he evidently wanted to, I guess, feel how he could race like his old self, because I don't think he felt he raced to his true potential at the World Championship. So according to his um, post-race uh, debrief, he said he just felt great out there, led out of the water with a sizable margin and never really looked back. He actually took a little bit of a wrong turn. By his own admission, his own fault on the bike, but it didn't deter him. He held on to the win very comfortably from Dylan Magnane from France in second. and. Uh, very familiar name, Philippe Azevedo from Portugal in third. Well, over on the women's side, it was Emma Pallant, who, well, was basically in a league of her own. She went on to take the win a good, well, well half, half an, an hour ahead of second place. That <laughs> was Claudia Wilfer. I've not actually come across her before, but um, yeah, so congratulations to her. And then third place went to Lucy Biddleston. But they were actually amateur athletes, so that was the second and third yeah. fastest That's time. That's why I don't recognize the name. <laughs> Now moving on to our final race result of the weekend and that takes us right down to the shortest and most furious of racing that is Super League and it was the turn of Jersey to kick off the 2019-2020 season of Super League. Now after qualification processes on the Saturday for the Sunday's final, athletes were ready to take on the Enduro format over 300 meter swim, 7k bike and 1.6k run but unfortunately due to very high winds they had to withdraw the bike leg for both the women's and the men's racing leaving what they called an Enduro aquathlon of four times through 
300 meter swim and 1.6 K run, which sounds brutal that to me. That will be brutal given how fast these guys are going to be. And they, they will not take, well, <laughs> they will pace it, but you know what that pace is like. You're flat out. And then <laughs> getting out of the water to start running hard and then trying that process. Yeah, really tough racing. So hats off to those guys. I bet it was absolutely incredible racing. Yeah, and it was a bit of a domination by France this weekend, Oh my actually. word. So true to form, our new world champion in the form, Vincent Louis, took the win from his countryman, Pierre Lacour, five seconds behind. Third place went to the young up and coming Hayden Wild from New Zealand. And then we had Ben Knut, who's been mixing up at all sorts of different distances. So very impressive to see him after just racing at World 70.3 Championships just a couple of weeks ago in fourth. And then another Frenchman, Leo Berger in third. Yep. Uh, fifth, fifth. <laughs> and then on the women's side, we had French woman Cassandra Beaugrand taking the win over Katie Saferis in second, Rachel Klammer in third, Vicky Holland taking fourth, and then Taylor Spivey in fifth. Well, now time to take a look through some of your photos that you've been sending in to us. We've got some crackers. <laughs> yeah, this first one's brilliant. Uh, sent in by Joe. Um, this is from Long <laughs> Island in New York. And he has just pulled in to pack a pickup for his first 70.3. Love this. It's but brilliant. on a motorbike with his bike on the back, he's made a custom bike mount. Amazing. Um, so, and, and also to add to that, he's also got his camping gear so he can spend the night there. Um, and he finished his first 70.3 in incredible time at six hours and 19 minutes. So. Hats off to you, Joe, we love yeah. that. And also for the bike mount, because that is <laughs> yeah. brilliant. I love that, really nice looking bike as well. Now, next, this is a story that caught my eye, not least because we have just arrived here on, if you hadn't already worked it out, on a Hawaiian island. So um, this was from Eric, who on his Specialized Ruby in training for the Ironman 70.3 Santa Cruz a few weeks ago, he decided to take himself over to Maui, which is pretty cool, as part of his training regime to ride what is effectively the longest paved road in the world. Well, high, sorry, in terms of from sea level right to the summit of, get this pronunciation right, Mount Haula. Kayla. Oh, I've just murdered that, haven't Sounds I? Sounds good to me, Fraser. Um, but, but that's the volcano at the top of Maui, and it's over 10,000 feet high, something like... 3,055 meters. Which is higher than almost anything you can go. I think it's higher than any paved road I in think Europe, it, I think which is just me mental. Wow, well, yeah, you've been and struggling it, for oxygen it, up there. It looks like he's pretty, pretty cold up there at the top. I'm sure it was bright blue sunshine at the bottom. So yeah, just an incredible right by right. Yeah, yeah, well done mate. Thanks for that. Um, next one comes from Nick and this is, he's on his Canyon Air Road CFSL 8.0 in black. Mm. But this is important because he's actually near Koblenz, um, which is where Canyon, Canyon comes from. Factory. And you've been there. I have, and he says he's discovering the golden hour with my new aero road bike. Um, and he looks like he's on the very road that we filmed on ourselves when I collected my Canyon yeah. speed pack. So yeah, it is beautiful around there. Some lovely, lovely roads. Especially and at that time of night, the sunlight. Oh, lovely, yeah, thanks so, for that picture. Yeah, do keep sending in your photos using our photo uploader. Link is in the description below. We're now moving on to our caption comp. Don't actually have my cap here today. Um, yeah, that was a miss. I've, yeah, didn't think about that. Oh well, anyway. Um, but yeah, your chance to win a cap or GTN cap from us. Uh, last week's photo was from Ironman 70.3 Weymouth. Uh, it's quite an interesting shot. There's all sorts going on in this. Yeah. Uh, we've got some good captions coming through. Savage Poet said, a complete triathlon in one picture. Get wet, ride, and run. Yeah, and then we've got Game Blair Color who says, how is he already on the run? I haven't even started the swim, which is a good point because I've got a wetsuit there on the beach. Uh, and Darren Woods, he is the winner. You do get our GTN cap. And he said, wait, what time was the age group start? Um, so yeah, very good. Uh, this week's GTN uh, caption comp photo actually comes here from Kona. Yeah. Um, but yeah, drop your captions in the comment section below. Go mad. Right, that brings to a close another edition of the GTN show from here in Kona, our first of a couple. And we're very excited to be here if you hadn't already guessed. If you also want to feel a little bit like you're in Kona, then these t-shirts that Mark and I are fashioning are available now for pre-order in the shop. Fashioning is quite a strong word, Fraser. I'm not sure I'm fashioning anything. <laughs> but if you also do want to get involved in your hair in Kona, some of the lucky few out there will be announcing an opportunity for 
people to get hold yeah. of them. We're going to be handing some out for free. Um, that'll be coming at some point this week. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And um, if you want to also just feel involved with some of this Kona vibe, we have loads of Kona videos coming out over the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned, keep an eye on the channel. We've also got a what is high elbow swimming, which is something we hear so much about time and time again. Uh, so we have a video on that coming very soon. Yeah, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. So please hit that thumb up like button. Find the globe somewhere on screen to subscribe and get all the other videos here on our channel. And if you want to see a video about more power on the bike that we've done with Lisa Norden, you can find that here. Yeah, if you'd like to see a video on swimming for runners, you can see that by clicking just down here.